What's up everybody, I'm Olien and I'm back for another synthesis tutorial and in this one we're actually going to take a look at how you can make your bass sounds fatter. So no matter if you want to start some presets from scratch or you want to tweak presets in a way that they're a bit fatter, there are a few underlying synthesis techniques and understandings that you need to uh, make that happen. So I like to get a bit nerdy and technical but sometimes that helps, so let's jump right in. All right, so let's get started in Diva, which is probably my favorite synthesizer for house music just because it's so versatile and it has these all these different functions. And for those of you who don't know, Diva, the idea behind Diva is basically to combine a bunch of different old school synthesizers in one and allow you to pick different elements and sections of these synthesizers and combine them in a way to kind of create uh, different setups. And right now we are in a setup which is called the Mini Mono Template. So this would be your basic Mini Moog setup that you would also find in the Mini um, from Arturia or, or other uh, software companies. So let's take a look at this. The first technique that I want to show you guys to talk about fat bass sounds is the following. Certain synthesizers don't really re-trigger, which means you will get a lot of phasing if you combine different oscillators. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just start like with very something very basic, just get a bass sound going. So this would be like your basic Moog bass, right? And um, if you turn this up a little bit. around here obviously kind of a rough preset at this point but it sounds pretty fat when uh, low end wise at least let's see what happens if we add another oscillator with the same waveform in this case oscillator 2 you will start some coursing and phasing happening obviously uh, to hear some phasing happening and if we add a third one even more. So what I'm getting at is depending on how you, you know, well you know your synthesizer and know your setup and how the synth synthesizer works, you will want to choose between combining some oscillators or not. In this case, since the mini mono, is, the waveforms are running so freely, the moment you add another oscillator it will kind of phase and add some chorusing effects and stuff like that. So if you want to go for a fat bass sound for a synthesizer like this, it might make sense to just use one oscillator because it will just be one strong waveform by itself which is not conflicting with some other waveforms. Other synthesizers, which we will also take a look at in a moment, allow you actually to perfectly re-trigger and make very fat bass sounds. All right, but let's stick with one oscillator in this case. Now let's take a look at the feedback. So what feedback does is once the audio runs through the filter, it sends it through the filter again and again and again and again depending on how much you set your feedback. It's kind of like when you work with delay or something like that. What happens if you add some feedback is that the filter gets steeper and steeper because it's filtering again and again and again but since there is a cutoff frequency and there's no filtering below this cutoff frequency the area which is basically getting fed back into is more leaning towards the low end. And what that means is that you can make your low end a little bit fatter by adding some feedback and making your filter steeper because it's filtering more high end and mid range frequencies and you will add more bass in the feedback process. So it's kind of subtle sometimes, but let's take a listen. So if you have good headphones or a sub, you will probably hear a difference. The thing with feedback or depending or de depending on your synthesizer, if you add too much feedback, it will distort, which can be a cool effect. But um, if you want to have a cl clean fat bass, that's obviously nothing that you're looking for. So just around here sounds good. Okay, let's move on to the next thing still in the mini mono setup. Obviously, you have your ADSR controls for your filters and your amplitude envelope and this kind of stuff. And something that kind of matters when you're talking about fat bass sounds is the amplitude envelope because depending on how you set it, you're either letting or creating a lot of bass or you're not creating any sound, basically. Let's do a, a quick setup with like a very short snappy sound. 
So this is extreme, obviously. But the moment you turn this up more and you add more decay, you're also creating more bass. This was an extreme example, but if you have a sound, for example, and it just doesn't sound full enough and you don't want to compress it yet, setting your amp envelope and your filter envelope correctly so that the bass is actually there and enough bass is coming through, that's also kind of important to make your bass tones fat enough, right? Let's move on to the last thing in the mini setup. Depending on your filter circuit, your emphasis or resonance, usually you call it, um, will or your resonance basically adds a boost at the cutoff frequency, right? So you kind of get this boost at that point. Depending on your filters, it will either just boost the, the cutoff frequency and leave everything else the way it is, or like in this case, it will boost your cutoff frequency and add a lot of resonance and also lower everything that's below the cutoff frequency, which can be very nice to create some crazy acid and form and filtering sounds and this kind of stuff. But for some bass sounds, it will make them sound thin. So if you add too much resonance, that might also make your bass sounds not uh, fat anymore. So let's take a listen to that. The higher I go, you actually hear that the rest is disappearing. Super cool sound though. Super nice. But the moment I bring down the resonance, or emphasis in this case, your bass is fat again. So that's also something that you can keep in mind if your bass is maybe not fat enough. Does it maybe have too much resonance for this specific filter? Should I maybe use a different filter or something like that? Yeah, that's something I wanted to show. So let's look at one example in another D Diva preset and maybe give this a quick listen. We have some feedback here, we have some decent waveforms, we should combine. So listening to this, this is a kind of a cool fat bass in a way. The more high frequencies you add the sharper it kind of sounds and it becomes in more and more of a lead so sometimes you have to consider do i want a lot of mid-range for my bass and make it very audible or do i want to focus in the low end and make it sound like a bit oomphy and also here's a filter type which is called rough instead of clean and rough usually will add distortion which add, which adds high end and mid-range frequencies and also kind of important for what bass sound you want to go for. So now it's on clean. And sometimes adding overtones and distortion can make things sound fatter, but sometimes it can also make things so, sound so bright that it turns more into a lead sound in, in, uh, instead of something fat. So another thing that you can look at, right? Okay, let's leave Diva and jump into a very old school plugin, Silent One. Also one of my favorites because it can make a bunch of cool sounds, which are pretty cool. So in this case, let's give a quick listen to this bass line. Also pretty cool bass sound, of course. Here we have the following thing that I want to talk about, the re-trigger. You also have some retrigger options in Diva and many other synthesizers. You just have to find out if your synthesizer is retriggering or not and if you want to do that for your presets. So what retrigger does basically allows you to that whenever you trigger a, a key, your waveforms start over at exactly the same point, which allows you to layer them in phase, which means they're kind of layered well on top of each other so they're adding to create a fatter bass sound in our case. So what I did here is I actually combined um, two waveforms which are one octave apart. So we have a square wave on the bottom and then this crazy tri trisaw wave which I like in silent uh, on top and then we have the re-trigger turned on. Let, let's listen what happens if you turn off the re-trigger. makes it stereo, let's make it mono. Also sounds cool. This would be just the, the square wave. 
so adding the next layer with the octave above is kind of cool. But I feel like with retrigger on it's even a little bit tighter. Once again over here you can see no resonance in this case and a little bit of drive for distortion. This would be happening with resonance. So resonance gives a cool character but at the same time it kind of takes some fatness away. So obviously, uh, oh and by the way, I'm gonna try and uh, save some of these presets and uh, put them over in my drive folder which you can access through my Instagram bio. There's a link in my Instagram bio and you can click on it and head to the free download section and I have some free presets and stuff like this in there. Yeah, I mean, the idea behind this was to bring across some techniques that you need to understand in order to kind of master your bass sounds and turn them into what you want them to sound. Not everyone has to be a sound designer and create presets from scratch and this kind of stuff, but usually it's very helpful to tweak them or know how to trick them in a way that you can play around and modulate them and make your tracks more dynamic and stuff like that. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any feedback or questions, and I hope to see you soon. Peace.